Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stelmach, and I'm glad to present for you the new episode of our daily wrap-up series. January 2023 became a record for the number of Russian occupiers killed. For the first time since the beginning of the full-scale war, our soldiers killed more than 20,000 enemies in a month. 20,000 is the entire population of a small city, for example in Switzerland. And today I want to tell you what caused these losses and what the consequences will be. First of all, such losses are due to the fact that the Russians are currently using poorly trained soldiers. These are recently mobilized soldiers, as well as criminals, who were recruited into Wagner PMC. Most of them didn't have military training, but the Russians also used the tactics of the First and Second World Wars, when enemy positions are stormed by a huge number of soldiers. Most of them die before reaching the enemy positions. From this falls the second factor that affects such losses – the lack of medium and light armored vehicles. The Russians attack either on tanks or on foot. The latter method is often used in units of PMC Wagner. This, of course, leads to an increase in losses during assaults. And the third factor is the increase in the intensity of hostilities themselves. The Russians continue to storm the cities of Donetsk region. Probably the general staff set the task of capturing as much territory as possible before the anniversary of the start of a full-scale war. We must understand the psychology of Putin. He doesn't care how many people will die. He's absolutely indifferent to someone else's death, at least he himself survives. For this, he is ready to kill as many people as he wants. There must be no illusion, no doubts, no sentimentality. He perceives human losses as a threat to the country's manageability and control over the situation. If these losses begin to worry society and Putin begins to lose control, then he will shed fake tears. The Putin regime is committing a crime not only against the Ukrainian people, but also against its own, sending people to senseless massacres. The number of Russian losses in the war with Ukraine has already surpassed the official losses of the USSR during the Winter War with Finland. Almost 127,000. Putin's next unbroken records are two world wars and the Russian Civil War of the early 20th century. The pace of Russian losses in 2023 is the highest even during the full-scale invasion, almost 700 per day, and tends to grow. Russian generals and field commanders are trying to fill Ukrainian positions with the corpses of their soldiers, but the tactic brings them very limited results. Russia's human resources are not unlimited. In modern demographic conditions, it will not be possible to repeat successes of the Second World War. The war to the last Russian is doomed to defeat. So, in January alone, the Russian armed forces lost more than 20,000 people. And this is according to the calculations of the Ukrainian army, that is, those whose deaths can be definitely confirmed, and how many wounded and captured. According to general statistics, there should be three times more. That is, in January alone, 60,000 Russians will no longer return to the front line. By the way, this is a fifth of what was mobilized in September, according to the Kremlin plan. At such rates, a new wave of mobilization must be made. Therefore, the Russians should prepare. All the more so, as intelligence officials are now talking about a possible new offensive in the near future. We went through an extensive difficult period, but I am conscious the main fights are yet to come, and they will happen this year, within two or three months. This will be defining months in the war. Russia is preparing for maximum escalation. It is gathering everything possible, doing drills and training. Oleksiy Danilov, the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, in the interview with the Sky News. Also, Danilov said he expected about half of more than 320,000 soldiers mobilized by Russia would be involved in the second wave, whenever it came. The first half of the manpower have already been deployed to Ukraine to replenish Russian lines after Moscow's invading forces suffered significant losses. There must be serious losses that would have an effect. It's over 100,000 servicemen of the Russian Federation destroyed. I think that this number should increase two or three times so that they effectively influence themselves in breaking down the moral and psychological confrontation of the people and, first of all, those mobilized who is in the armed force of the Russian Federation and who are at the front. This is the facilities by the effective actions of the defense forces of Ukraine, and here our capabilities will increase. Of course, they will increase, because we have already been promised more than 320 tanks. And we are also waiting for planes. 
for the complete defeat of Russia. And by the way, former US ambassador to Russia Michael McFaul expressed a similar opinion. In an article for Foreign Affairs, he expressed his opinion that Russia should be defeated with the help of the so-called Big Ban. McFaul emphasizes the speed of decisions and their implementation. After all, if the decision on Leopard tanks had been made three months ago, NATO equipment would have been used in the battlefield by now. After all, what did Russia do after Germany announced its intentions regarding heavy weapons? Nothing. And it won't be able to show anything anymore, should we return on nuclear blackmail again. The way this new military assistance is announced also matters. Rather than providing attack camps in March, reapers in June and jets in September, NATO should go for a big bang. Plans to provide all these systems should be announced on February the 24th, 2023, the first anniversary of the Putin invasion. An announcement of this size will produce an important psychological effect inside the Kremlin and Russian society, signaling that the West is committed to Ukraine's ambition to liberate all occupied territories. Already Kremlin propagandists on television lament that they are fighting a well-armed and rich NATO, which has greater resources than Russia. On February 24th, Biden and NATO allies could fuel the perception that it would be futile for Russia to continue its fight. Michael McFaul, former United States ambassador to Russia, in his article for Foreign Affairs. Yes, of course, in Europe now, are afraid of further escalation. This was the official reason for the refusal of Austria and Hungary to provide arms to Ukraine. However, the president of Austria, Alexander van der Bellen, arrived in Ukraine today. He has already visited Bucha, and let's hope that after he saw all the atrocities in this city near Kyiv, his country will change its mind. By the way, the vice president of the German Bundestag, Katrin Göring Eckart, also came to Kyiv today. During her several days stay in Ukraine, according to the politician, she wants to visit rural regions, as well as Kyiv, to get a picture of the humanitarian situation. And it is very difficult nowadays, because the Russian troops do not fight well against our soldiers, but they fight well against civilians. Therefore, in order for Ukraine not to pay a high price for killed and wounded servicemen and civilians, we must receive military aid as soon as possible. After all, not only Russians die. A lot of our soldiers who stand for the independence of their own country, for the future of children and the civilization at all, have died. Putin destroyed the energy market that Russia had been building for 50 years in 50 weeks. This is the headline of an article on Bloomberg recently. And it's hard to disagree with my colleagues. After all, Russia spent almost 50 years creating its energy market in Europe. During this time, they built the Druzhba oil pipeline, several different lines of gas, including Uringoy Pomari Uzhorod, the Turkish stream and two Nord streams. All these communications were almost destroyed by one Russian attack on Ukraine. Yes, fuel still goes to Europe for them, but more and more countries have already refused or are planning to refuse trade with the aggressor state. And few can predict when Russia will be able to regain the energy market of Europe, if it will be. Yes, now the Kremlin has found alternative markets for its crude oil, mainly in India, but the transition to the sale of petroleum products and natural gas will take years and will be associated with huge costs. Russia decided to choose the following tactics. Despite the fact that prices for Russian oil have fallen sharply and now the discount compared to Brent is 40%, this is a high discount and, in principle, the oil industry is working on the wedge of profitability. Russia made a decision that despite the low level of profitability and in some cases even when the cost of oil is below cost price, they still decided to sell their oil. Of course, they decided to sell, because the Russian budget is calculated in such a way that everyone will buy oil and hydrocarbons from them. But so far, no one wants to trade with the Kremlin. Yes, Russia may be able to restore energy relations with Europe after the war ends, and it will probably happen. But it is highly unlikely that the EU countries will ever allow themselves the dependence on Russian gas that existed before the war against Ukraine. That is, markets can be created at all when the world turns away from fossil fuels. By the way, Putin clearly counted on Europe's dependence on Russian gas during the attack on Ukraine. Even in autumn, Russian propaganda channels told scary stories that the EU would freeze without fuel supplied from Russia. 
However, it is already February and as far as I know, no one has caught cold. In particular, thanks to the weather. But those who start to freeze a little are the Russians themselves. Since January the 1st, the cost of utility services has increased in Russia, sometimes by 20%. This is in a country that is rich in gas and oil. But it is possible to understand the Russian government. If no one in the world buys their resources at crazy rates, they will take money from the people. All the same, it will endure all the tightening of belts. But how long? Especially after a new wave of mobilization and failed attacks. Wounded and amputees will go to the streets of Russian cities en masse and protest violently. A protest of a social and not a political nature will spread across the territory of the Russian Federation because of loved ones lost in the war. At this time, significant internal strife will flare up in Putin and Tarich. The classic Russian search for the guilty will begin. Mikhail Podolyak, advisor to the head of the office of the president of Ukraine, on Telegram. Of course, they can continue to tell on Russian television that the collective West, the USA, Europe and damned Ukrainian nationalists who didn't want to live in the Russian world are guilty of everything. A world of lies, tortures, murders and decays. We are against it. It was not for nothing that our president said, without gas or without you. Without you. Without light or without you. Without you. Without water or without you. Definitely without you. Without food or without you. Without you. Cold, hunger, darkness and thirst are not as scary, as deadly to us as your friendship and brotherhood. We see this brotherhood after certain missile attacks on our energy system in the fall and winter. The Russians wanted to break us with their missiles, but they will not succeed. Yes, we now spend half a day at home without electricity, often without heat, but we will get through it. But whether the current Russian political leadership will stay in power until next winter is an open question, and I hope not anyway. On January 26, Russia conducted yet another missile and drone strike on Ukraine, resulting in the deaths of 11 innocent people and 11 more injured. As Russians keep running out of their high-precision missiles, they are resorting to using outdated and less accurate Soviet-era missiles, which are increasingly hitting residential areas. In order to prevent Russia from terrorizing civilians and destroying critical infrastructure, Ukraine is calling upon the EU and G7 nations to impose severe sanctions on Russia's missile and drone production industries. This is the only way to ensure that the aggressor state is not able to manufacture and maintain high-tech weaponry, especially missiles which are used for war crimes. Putin will not stop until he is stopped. That's why calls for a ceasefire, audible across Europe and America, are badly misplaced. This is not the time to accept unfavorable ceasefire proposals or peace deals. The task instead is to defeat Russia and limit its ability to attack anyone again in the foreseeable future. With a sustained and timely assistance, Ukraine is ready and able to do so. We are studying the situation in detail in all major operational directions and in the long term, what the occupiers is preparing for and how we are already responding to the Russia's preparation for the revenge attempt. Our defense and security forces, the Ukrainian government, our partners, all of us are making efforts to ensure that Russia not only fails in regaining ground on the battlefield, but also loses its last hope for aggression in its revenge attempts. Russia's defeats will prevent any alternatives to the lasting and reliable peace. I thank all our partners who support this position of Ukraine. Yes, the EU is currently developing the tense package of sanctions against Russia. As noted by Volodymyr Zelensky, it should contain restrictions for the Russian nuclear industry. The time has come, in particular, for sanctions against the Russian nuclear industry, against all its branches, organizations against all entities that work for the Russian missile program, as well as for new steps in the energy sector, including an embargo on Russian energy carriers. Europe has sufficient strength to leave the Russian Federation without such a powerful resource for aggression. We hope that within the next week, the European Union will agree on a new package of sanctions against Russia and Belarus. That concludes our today's video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for future videos. Subscribe to our channel and goodbye.